Hello and welcome to today's video on competition law in India. In this video, we'll discuss what competition law is, why it's important and how it works in India. Competition law is a set of rules and regulations designed to promote fair competition in the market and prevent anti-competitive practices by companies. These practices include things like price fixing, collusion and monopolies. The aim of competition law is to ensure that consumers have access to a wide range of products and services at competitive prices. In India, competition law is governed by the Competition Act of 2002. The Competition Commission of India, that is CCI, is the regulatory body responsible for enforcing the Act. The CCI is an independent body that is responsible for promoting and protecting competition in the Indian market. The Act applies to all businesses operating in India, regardless of their size or sector. The Act prohibits anti-competitive agreements between businesses, abuse of dominant position by businesses, and mergers and acquisitions that can have an adverse impact on competition in the market. The Act gives the CCI the power to investigate and penalize companies that violate competition laws. The penalties for violating competition laws can be significant and can include fines, divestitures and even imprisonment for individuals involved in anti-competitive practices. One of the key features of competition law in India is the concept of cartels. A cartel is a group of companies that work together to restrict competition in the market. Cartels are strictly prohibited under the Competition Act and the CCI has the power to impose penalties on companies in involved in cartels. The Act also provides for the establishment of the Competition Appellate Tribunal, CAT, which is a quasi-judicial body that hears appeals against orders passed by the CCI. The CAT is an independent body that provides an additional layer of scrutiny to the decisions of the CCI. Now let's talk about or explore the key elements of competition law in India. The key elements of the competition law in India include the prohibition of anti-competitive agreements, the regulation of abuse of dominant position, the regulation of combinations and the establishment of the Competition Commission of India. The Act prohibits agreements that restrict competition and adversely affect the market, including price fixing, bid rigging and market allocation agreements. Dominant companies are prohibited from engaging in anti-competitive practices such as predatory pricing or limiting production. The regulation of combinations involves examining mergers, acquisitions and amalgamations to ensure that they do not have an adverse effect on competition. The CCI is responsible for enforcing competition law and has the power to impose penalties on violators. The Rajya Sabha approved the Competition Amendment Bill 2023 aimed at modernizing the two-decade-old antitrust law to align with changes in the economy. The bill aims to modify the Competition Act 2002, which authorizes the Competition Commission of India to prevent practices that adversely impact competition and consumer interests. The Competition Commission of India The Competition Commission of India, or CCI for short, is an important regulatory body that was established under the Competition Act of 2002. Its primary function is to promote fair competition and protect the interests of consumers. The CCI is headed by a chairperson and consists of other members appointed by the central government. Their roles and responsibilities include reviewing mergers and acquisitions, investigating anti-competitive practices and regulating markets to ensure that they are fair and competitive. The CCI plays a crucial role in promoting a level playing field for businesses and protecting consumers from unfair trade practices. It has the power to impose penalties on companies that engage in anti-competitive behaviour and can also order structural remedies such as divestiture of assets or modification of business practices. In summary, the Competition Commission of India is an important regulatory body that helps ensure that businesses operate in a fair and competitive environment, protecting the interest of consumers in the process.
Now let's understand the composition of Competition Commission of India. So according to the regulations, the CCI has to have a chairperson and at least two but no more than six other members appointed by the central government. Currently, the chairperson is Dr. Sangeeta Verma and another member is Bhagwant Singh Bishnoi. It's important to know who makes up the CCI as they play a crucial role in promoting fair competition and protecting consumers. Understanding Anti-Competitive Practices in India Anti-Competitive Practices refer to actions taken by companies or individuals to restrict or eliminate competition in the market. In India, these practices are regulated by the Competition Act of 2002. The Competition Commission of India is responsible for enforcing the Act and ensuring that the market remains competitive, transparent and fair. Let's take a closer look at some of the common anti-competitive practices and agreements in India. First, price fixing is a common practice where competitors agree to set a minimum or maximum price for a product or service. This restricts competition and harms consumers. Such agreements are strictly prohibited under the Competition Act of 2002. Second, market sharing agreements are another form of anti-competitive practice. This occurs when competitors divide a market amongst themselves and agree not to compete with each other. This restricts consumer choice and harms competition. Third, bid rigging is a practice where competitors collude to manipulate the bidding process for contracts. This artificially inflates prices and harms consumers. Bid rigging is a criminal offence in India and can lead to imprisonment and fines. Fourth, abuse of dominant position occurs when a company with a dominant market position uses its power to harm competition. This can be in the form of predatory pricing, tying arrangements or exclusive dealing. The CCI can take action against such companies to ensure a level playing field for competitors. Finally, mergers and acquisitions can also lead to anti-competitive practices if they result in a dominant market position for the merged entity. The CCI assesses such mergers and acquisitions to ensure that they do not harm competition. In conclusion, Anti-competitive practices and agreements harm competition and consumers. The Competition Act 2002 and the CCI regulate such practices and ensure that the market remains competitive, transparent and fair. Companies engaging in anti-competitive practices can face heavy fines and penalties. Now let's talk about vertical and horizontal agreements in India. Vertical agreements are made between parties operating at different levels of the supply chain such as a manufacturer and a distributor. On the other hand, horizontal agreements are made between parties operating at the same level of the supply chain such as two manufacturers. In India, the Competition Act 2002 regulates such agreements to prevent anti-competitive practices. Let's take a closer look at each one of these agreements. Vertical agreements such as exclusive supply or distribution agreements can be legal if they do not restrict competition. However, if they result in price fixing, market allocation or output restrictions, they can be deemed anti-competitive. The Competition Commission of India has issued guidelines to assess whether such agreements are anti-competitive or not. For instance, the guidelines specify that exclusive distribution agreements for a limited period may not be considered anti-competitive. On the other hand, horizontal agreements such as price fixing or market sharing agreements are strictly prohibited in India. Such agreements are seen as a direct harm to competition and consumer welfare. The CCI can impose heavy fines and penalties on parties engaging in anti-competitive practices. It can also order the termination of such agreements and require the parties to enter into a new agreement that complies with the law. Competition law in India has seen many significant cases over the years. Let's take a look at some of the most noteworthy ones. Firstly, the Competition Commission of India versus Coordination Committee of Artists and Technicians of West Bengal Film and Television. In this case, the CCI found that the Coordination Committee had used its dominant position in the film and television industry to impose unreasonable restrictions on the entry of new entrants and restrict competition. The CCI imposed a penalty of approximately 37 crores on the Coordination Committee. Secondly, the CCI versus 
is Google. In 2018, the CCI found Google guilty of abusing its dominant position in the market for online search through its search bias practices. The CCI imposed a fine of approximately 136 crores on Google for engaging in search bias and promoting its own services over those of its competitors. Thirdly, the CCI versus Uber. The CCI imposed a fine of approximately 25 crores on Uber for its failure to notify the CCI of its acquisition of Uber India Systems Private Limited. The CCI found that Uber had violated the provisions of the Competition Act which require mandatory prior notification of such acquisitions. Lastly, the CCI versus Amazon and Flipkart. In 2020, the CCI initiated an investigation against Amazon and Flipkart for alleged violation of competition law in the Indian e-commerce market. The CCI found that the two companies had violated competition laws by engaging in exclusive partnerships, preferential treatment of select sellers, and deep discounting practices. These cases are just a few example of the various cases that have helped shape competition law in India. Now let's talk about recent changes to the Competition Act of 2002 in India. The post-pandemic economy has been on a path of recovery and competition law authorities worldwide have been actively taking notice of antitrust violations especially in digital markets. The Competition Commission of India has been following suit by focusing its enforcement policies in the digital market space, initiating investigations and imposing penalties on major players in the technology sector. The CCI's lenient approach towards micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, is noteworthy. These enterprises are still trying to recover from the economic aftermath of the pandemic and the CCI has been understanding of their situation. The rise of digital markets has brought about new challenges for competition law and the CCI has been keeping up with the global trends by taking an active role in promoting fair competition in the Indian market. The CCI's actions have been instrumental in safeguarding the interest of consumers and ensuring that businesses operate in a fair and transparent manner. Now let's talk about some recent changes to the Competition Commission of India's regulations. On 8 April 2022, the commission issued the Competition Commission of India General Amendment Regulations 2022, which includes some new rules for safeguarding the identity of informants. Under the new amendment, the commission will protect the secrecy of an informant's identity upon written request. However, there are some conditions that must be met in order for the commission to grant this protection. The party requesting confidentiality must offer a compelling justification for the request and self-certify that making any part of the information public will expose important trade secrets, destroy data, significantly reduce their commercial value or be reasonably expected to result in serious harm. In addition to this, the party must also certify that the information is not in the public domain. Only a small number of the party's employees, distributors and suppliers are aware of it. They have taken adequate steps to protect the information's confidentiality and the information cannot be obtained or duplicated by others. Now, if a party requests confidentiality for any information or documents provided, they must submit a complete version of the uncensored document with the words restriction of publication claimed placed on the top of the first page and the word confidential clearly and legibly marked in red ink near the top of each page. They must also submit a non-confidential version of the document with any confidential information redacted or omitted and the omissions of confidential information indicated conspicuously. It's important to note that the non-confidential version of the document must resemble the confidential version in all other aspects. This means that while some information may be redacted or omitted, the non-confidential version must still contain all of the relevant information necessary to understand the document. 
these new regulations are a step towards protecting the identity of informants and ensuring that important information is not shared publicly without just cause. By requiring parties to provide a compelling justification for confidentiality and self-certify that the information meets certain criteria, the Commission can ensure that they are only protecting information that truly needs to be kept confidential. Overall, these changes to the Competition Commission of India's regulations are a positive development for both informants and the general public. They provide a necessary level of protection for sensitive information while ensuring that important information is made available to those who need it. The Competition Law Review Committee The Competition Law Review Committee was established in 2018 to review the Competition Act of 2002 and to propose procedural and structural elements to the Act to address the changing market policies. After much deliberation, the Competition Amendment Bill 2022 was introduced and approved by the Cabinet. One major change that the Bill intends to bring is the alteration of the governing structure of the Competition Commission of India to better suit the demands of modern markets. Another significant change is broadening the definition of illegal anti-competitive agreements to include new age marketing strategies that do not fit neatly into traditional supply chain arrangements. The bill also reduces the overall time limit for the assessment of combinations to 150 days from 210 days. Under the new bill, mergers and acquisitions exceeding rupees 2,000 crore in value must be notified to the CCI, provided that the party being acquired has substantial business operations in India. Other changes include introducing a board to oversee CCI operations with part-time members, mandatory publication of penalty criteria by CCI, and introduction of a green channel for merging applications. The law also acknowledges other type of cartels such as hub and spoke cartels and includes a catch-all clause that allows the CCI to deal with anti-competitive agreements regardless of how parties are structured. Data collection and usage have given corporations an unprecedented amount of power over the way the markets shift and churn. Hence, the recent changes are quintessential to overseeing and regulating the disruption being caused by the advent of technology. The government must maintain a balance between a robust administrative structure and a system sympathetic to the market if it is to benefit as much as possible from the sizable market. In conclusion, these changes are a step in the right direction towards maintaining a competitive market while regulating the use of data in a fair and just manner. However, it will be crucial to keep an eye on the possible implications of the introduced changes. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the notification.